Let's go. Let's go. Welcome back to another episode of the Poly Ticket Podcast, you nerds. Marcus, Sefa, we're here. It's episode 38. Two more episodes till 40, bro. Damn. We're getting God old. Bless it. Yeah, man. This show is 38 weeks old. That's usually that's like a baby, right? Well, I don't know if it's 38 because I was going back. We kind of was releasing episodes like twice a week. Remember the 30 oh, minute yeah. episodes? Mm hmm. So maybe not 38 weeks, but still 30 something weeks. That's crazy. Hey, still, man. 38 okay. episodes. 38 <laughs> episodes. How's that for you? Huh? Remember when we was doing um, 30 minute episodes and as soon as the little thing pops up that says you have 10 minutes to record, we just had to hurry up and talk back. Yeah, for real. And we always kept our eye on the counter too. Like, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, fuck all that. Yeah, but anyways, man, how you doing, bro? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Yeah. Same old shit, you know. Uh, a little change of scenery, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your boy got new new curtains. I got new curtains, okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lean over and look the other way, other way. You know what I mean? Okay, you know what I mean? okay. okay. You know I mean? It's a mental asylum white, but that's okay. You know, it's, it's whatever. Marcus has changed, bro. I'm telling you. Know you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just going to sit like this all day so everybody can see. <laughs> There's no more monkey hanging in the background. You know oh, what I'm saying? Right. No, yeah, Where did no, monkey go? Uh, the monkey's in the closet. Okay. Yeah, the monkey's like, in the closet. I thought it was on your back. Yeah. <laughs> it is also on my back. You see that? Okay. Yeah, it is also on my back. You but, know what else uh, is on Marcus's back? What? A brand new chair. A brand new chair. Now, nobody yeah. can see how torn up the old one was because that shit was... T- I didn't realize oh, how often that shit it. is in this. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize how often it was always in the shot and every time I I can't like I I can't just sit still I'm always got to move like this you know so everybody would see it it's like oh wow you're sitting in a ratty chair with messed up blinds what is it called the uh the Swiss rolls is that what it's called you know, oh looks, yeah, <laughs> that's what it looked like when the chocolate be breaking <laughs> off on the top of the Swiss rolls. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. Hey, Swiss rolls are good. Uh, uh, Swiss rolls are ho hos, bro. Which one is ho hos? Which one is that? I think they're they're just Hostess's version of the the first one. I already forgot the first one's name. Swiss rolls. Oh, but ho ho. Oh, oh. oh, see now I need to go get a ho ho. <laughs> I'm gonna Yo, go with, I'm gonna, are hella good. I'm gonna go with Swiss rolls so I don't have to keep saying ho ho like that. <laughs> yeah, Hostess has some very funny names for their their stuff. Mm. Twinkies, ho hos, uh, boogity boogity. No, I forgot. I forgot. I don't know the other ones. I don't know the other ones. Man. And this is why I'm diabetic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now well, I, ho- I, I, I feel like the Hostess cupcake is just the Hostess. It, it, you got to go between. The Hostess Cupcake or the Twinkie? What you choosing? Oh, Hostess Cupcake. Okay, me too. Hostess Cupcake, yeah. Twinkies are cool. They're cool in like a pinch, and they're they're cool in moderation. But that Hostess Cupcake, I can eat that every day for the rest of my life. And I with okay. a glass of milk, bro. Come on, guy. Oh my guy. goodness. Glass of milk, bro. Crazy man. Well, what the yeah. hell is up with you, bro? You okay? Uh, well, I probably need to take some insulin after this, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, I've been chilling. Um, you remember how I told you I'd be volunteering, right? Right. So I go there every Friday now. And uh, I see that. They, yeah. They, they actually gave me a they gave me my own title. OK, because <laughs> when I first went, like the lady was like, oh, so uh, I was like, OK, I'm going to help set up and, and put down, you know. Mm-hmm. So in the in the meantime, what do you need me to do? Because I'm not gonna, I'm not a dishwasher. I'm not a server. I'm, you know, I'm just going to help with the cleanup. Mm-hmm. So she was like, do you mind standing here and just keeping the dishes monitor? Like, cause like we run out. So I had to go to the kitchen and grab them, whatever. So then the first week I went, I did that. Then the second week she asked me to do it again. And then this week she was like, I'm just going to write dish monitor and put your name in there. I'm just going to type in your name. You're just yeah. you know, all, the all time dish monitor. I was like, oh, for sure. And I yeah. basically just stand there. Right. Mm-hmm. I get all the dishes beforehand. I stand there. I just put it on the table when they use it mm-hmm. and I greet people when they walk in. So oh, I'm basically, hard. I'm like the Walmart, you know what I'm saying? The old person. The Walmart greeter. The Walmart, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> See, now you don't have to say dish monitor either. You can shorten that into the initials. Just be like DM and everybody like DM. Well, like district manager. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. 
It's nah, the you, manager. She was like, what should we what should we call you for? And mind you, I only met this lady a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. and only like one day a week. So I don't really know her like that, but she's like, what should we, what should we put for your title? What do you think would be appropriate? I was like, uh, supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, supervisor. She looked up and she was like, uh, no, um. <laughs> oh, no sense of humor on that one, huh? Yeah. Nah, keep it strictly professional. Work. It, was, it was a little laugh. It was a little laugh, but, okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm the dish monitor now. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying yeah. to. I'm trying to get my foot in the door. Hopefully, when I when I can start working, I can I can get my job over there because it's literally down the street. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll be meeting hella people. Nice. You know it's crazy. Mm. Everyone or not everyone, but most of the people that volunteer there and like other places that I volunteer, they're all retired. Mm. And I know I I know that's not saying much because it's like, well, duh, you you gotta have free time to be able to volunteer your time. But like a lot of people are like. They've done they've done the traveling, they've done the working, they've done different multiple careers. Some people not really, but they've done a lot in their life. And they're all like, you know, 60, 70 years old. And then I'm like, if I'm 60, 70, like the last thing I'm finna do is go out of my way to volunteer, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of them, they talk to me and they like they tell me, bro, like that's that's what gets them going up, you know, in the mornings. Like one one lady, her name is Rachel. She's this little white lady. And she's, I don't know how old she is, but she's up there. <laughs> she drives like 35 minutes Fridays just mm. to come volunteer for an hour. Like, yeah. and she don't get paid, none of that. And then she just goes back home. Like, and I'm like, wait, you don't live around here? She's like, no, I live like 30, 35 minutes away. Yeah. I'm like, that's cr-. like, I don't, I, 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 man, you know, what's crazy. Like, I believe that too, because man, yeah. a lot of, a lot of those retirees, like, you know, like they all they want to do is, is work. They don't, a lot of them retirees don't like just sitting around. They get yeah. bored. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? They get bored and there's nothing to do. So they're like, man, fuck it. I have money. I have time. Maybe I can contribute. You know, yeah. I can use everything that I've learned of value and contribute to my volunteer work. And bro, like, I feel like I'm the like I would be the same way if I was like that, you know, unless I get yeah. like super obese. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know. <laughs> because <laughs> it's it's not out of the realm of possibility for me to be morbidly obese by 65 so i'm probably you know what i'm saying but if hey, that's not the case i got there at 25 bro. Let's get it. <laughs> you know what i'm saying according to my bmi i've been morbidly obese <laughs> for the entirety of my life but you know if it, if it doesn't come down to that at 65 i definitely would want to come yeah. outside you know be outside you know what i'm mm. saying if not volunteer work, then just, you know, be one of the old people nuisances at the park and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, just cause just being a menace. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. I'd probably be super bored in retirement. So yeah, I definitely I feel understand. It. I felt, yeah, my grandma, she was retired and then she just ended up going back to school. And that's right. She had a bachelor's and she started with a bachelor's when I was going to school. And now she, I think she's on her doctor's or something like that. Good Lord. I know. Okay, you don't have to show off. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm, not, no, I'm talking about your grandma. Bro. <laughs> oh, she is. Yeah, she, she is. is showing off. Yeah, chill, man. We, get damn, it. We, we can't even get that like before retirement. Like you went hey. and did all this cool shit, retired, and then did more cool <laughs> shit after retirement. What the hell? You know, it's funny. She listens to the podcast. I'm sorry. I take all of that back. I love you. <laughs> She, she, my mom, my mom had told me yesterday, she said, yeah, I was talking to grandma. She's in Hawaii now. And she was like, she turned, she said something and she's like, oh yeah. And except for with this little podcast and yeah. Oh yeah. I remember Marcus too. Yeah. Oh, uh, I listened to it. Oh, they're so stupid. They're so silly. I was like, oh wow. I got to tighten oh, up. Oh, <laughs> oh. Whoops. I was like, uh, hopefully she didn't go back to the uh, older oh, episode. Yeah, for real. There's, uh, bro, a lot of R-rated stuff back there, bro. Yeah. The cursing well, has out. definitely calmed down. Well, shout out to who? Shout out to shout out to Grandma, man. Appreciate yeah. you tapping in. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I st- did I talk about when I went to go see 21 Jump Street with her? Nah. No, oh, you see 21 <laughs> Jump Street? I did see 21 Jump Street. You went to see 21 Jump Street with your grandma? Bro. Was this so, in Salmore? In Salmore, bro. So I didn't know they anything about it. Jump. Oh, man. I didn't know anything about it, bro. Yeah. I just seen uh, what, what, what's his name, the fat dude, uh, Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. I seen mm-hmm. he was in it. Channing Tatum was cool too. You know what I mean? He dancer mm-hmm. or whatnot. And so my grandma was like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna go watch Twenty One Jump Street. You want to come?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, let's go." Like, yeah. 
<laughs> we get to 21 Jump Street, bro. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? And, she, and my grandma's not laughing. She's just sitting there eating her popcorn. Just... <laughs> I was like, I was here. I just felt hella awkward, bro. Yeah, of course. It was, it was dicks and all kinds of stuff going on. And she just sitting there eating her popcorn. <laughs> And then after like the ride hole was so quiet, and then like eventually I um, I mustered up the courage to be like, "Girl, what what made you want to watch that movie?" <laughs> Apparently, there was a TV show back in the day. Yeah, Johnny that, Depp, and she used to love that show. Mm-hmm. So then she wanted to watch it. Yeah, I don't think she liked the creative direction <laughs> the movie went. <laughs> it's just like she liked it. She's like, "That's different than what I remember." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Uh." And we never talked about it again, bro. Like, that, yeah, that mug was awkward, bro. Yeah, I bet. I didn't even want to eat popcorn. Like, I just wanted to get out of there. Like, yeah, you, feel, you felt dirty. Oh, man. Yeah, that hurt yeah, that, up, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Johnny Depp makes a cameo in the movie. Freaking dies. When? At the end. When they discovered the, it was the coach who was, <laughs> he was the I remember mastermind. It was the, I remember yes. it was the coach, but right, I don't so remember. the coach, yeah, so, uh, uh, Johnny Depp, uh, he makes a cameo at the end and he gets shot. He gets killed, oh. I think. Wow. I don't remember yeah. that, but that's, that's funny. Well, of course you don't remember that. He was over there experiencing <laughs> very, something very awkward. <laughs> like, I'm not going to remember any parts of this movie. I need to get the <laughs> fuck out of here. I was watching the movie like this, bro. Yeah, yeah for real. Oh, shit. Oh, um, man. See, anyway. At least it wasn't your idea to go watch the movie. Nah, it wasn't. It was not. No. It was not. You know, <laughs> have you ever been to an awkward movie like situation like what's the most awkwardest movie situation you've been to south park uh bigger longer non cut with my parents they didn't know what south park was but i did and i begged to go watch it i think i was like 11 or 12 I was like hell yeah dude we didn't last 10 minutes in there bro we did not last 10 minutes you know they're over there uh uh you know uh uh the, it was like a musical. They were like singing and shit. And there was a whole bunch of cursing, shitting, farting, whole bunch of talking shit. And it was from Terrence and Phillip, you know, uh, or whatever. So, you know, I'm sitting there enjoying it like, yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. And my parents were just like, let's get the fuck out of here. I was like, no, no, I want to watch it. Did you did you know that they wouldn't like it? Like, uh, <laughs> I think I did. I was just like, you didn't care? No. <laughs> At the time, no. I was like, I'm going to watch it. I want to watch it. Because the man, I was a hu- I was hugely into South Park when I was younger, which is weird because it shouldn't be. But South Park has been around for years. So, whatever. Uh, I, I had a situation. Uh, there was a girl on Twitter. She had tweeted. She, she's, I think we, we had a lot of mutuals. Nice. And she had tweeted that she went, she was like, dang, I want to go to the movies. But I I don't want to go alone. Anybody want to go to the movies? And it was like cool, like it wasn't nothing, you know, like that. It was just I was like, oh shoot, I'm chilling. What's up? Let's go to the movies. Yeah. So she comes, she picks me up. We go to the movies, right? Totally, just literally, she just didn't want to go alone. So we go to the movies, mm-hmm. but she was trying to watch a scary movie. I oh, didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Bro, I don't like scary movies, bro. I like, at all. I know. Bro, tell me why we get in there and the first like I, didn't, I forgot what it was called. I don't know what movie it was called with the twins or I don't know. Oh, but we God. get in we, with twins in a horror movie. <laughs> Fuck that. Okay. But it was something. But we get in there and the first like the first thing that I noticed was the 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 what is it commercials? The trailers, yeah. And bro, them all, trailers was scary as hell, and I'm yeah. looking I'm like you know, like if you watch a movie, maybe one, maybe two. Yeah, all of them was scary movies, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, hold up, bro, like what is going on here? Mm-hmm. And then like, yeah, the that movie, already sets the tone. That sets yeah. the tone for the, the rest of the experience. <laughs> and then the lights dim, and then it starts, and uh-huh. it's thunder and rain <laughs> and darkness and nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, this is not as game. <laughs> Bro, I look, it was a scary movie. For like the first three minutes I'm watching, it was a scary movie. But I, I looked, I said, man, check this out. I pop my glasses off and watch that one with no glasses on. Yeah. 
I couldn't Damn. see a thing. I just, I just seen just colors, and I just was watching it like that the whole time. She was like, "Oh my god, that's so scary!" I was like, "You scared? What the hell?" Yeah, <laughs> I feel like, like I know seeing it would be bad, but hearing it, hearing it is just like uh, it's a whole nother thing because you can't see it, but you can hear what's going on. It's like, oh, oh, at least if you're seeing it, you don't hear it. You can just close your eyes, right? I don't know. Uh, I don't know, man. I just man, don't. Not seeing it was just a lot better for me at that time for my okay, mental health. Fair <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, shout out to the movies, though, bro. Yeah, scary um, movies are awesome. I can't do it. I know. I can't. I can't even do scary games. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, video games. Oh, that's that is way scarier than a scary movie, bro. Because we have so? to control that shit. Yeah. Okay. Bro, playing I, with that, bro. Bro, if you set oh. the right atmosphere. <laughs> okay, headphones, lights off. You're playing with the controller, like bro. It's a whole lot scarier, bro. You're in control. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what's gonna happen. At least in the movie, you're you're in there with a crowd of people <laughs> who is all gonna be scared with you. Yo, your controller vibrates. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Start moving, like bro. Nah, hell no. Nah. I feel it. Yeah. Feel Shout it. out to the horror genre. I think a lot of our people really don't like the horror genre, bro. I don't. I'm with y'all. <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm with y'all. I'm one of y'all. <laughs> God, scary. You know who's not one of uh, one of y'all though? One of us. Yeah. One of us. You Ooh. know who's not one of us? Who? Eric McIntyre. Yeah. Fuck you, Eric McIntyre. I was gonna save that for later <laughs> yeah. on, but yeah, I just no, had to get we that gotta out. we gotta dive into this, bro. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Eric McIntyre is a Utah Mormon, white dude from Utah. And he has been going pretty viral as of late the last week. Um, he's just been, I think it started off with, uh, did you want to read the tweets? Uh, yeah. I think you, I think you got to read the Island culture one. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking to start at that one. Okay. Yeah. So at Eric McIntyre, bro has a friggin' USA flag next to his name. Nerd loser. Um, so he, it, what is this? A tweet. So it starts Island culture is too exalted in the church. I didn't even know that. I want to explore that first. You know what I'm saying? Oceanic people have been historically receptive to the gospel, which is excellent. But we seem too eager to adopt the unimportant aspects of their cultures. Who are you (laughs) to say what's unimportant? Like, please wear pants during sacrament meeting. Oh, what a bitch. Eric McIntyre is a bit. Oh, that that replies funny. Fucking nerd alert. Exactly. Freaking nerd. <laughs> what a nerd, bro. Fucking nerd. So after that, he says, um, because someone replied to him and uh, the reply says, you are a sad human. Just love your neighbor as you obviously love yourself. Be happy and kind. It's really not that hard. Even if it is hard for you, then you should take the advice that I used to tell the deacons. You can do hard things. And then Eric McIntyre says, I'm the happiest person I know. You know, as soon as someone says that, they're not the happiest person. <laughs> this motherfucker is sad. I'm the happiest person I know. If I didn't love these people, I wouldn't inform them of ways they can feel they can better feel the spirit. Oh, by wearing pants during sacrament meeting? Fuck you, Eric McIntyre. <laughs> I believe people can do hard things too, like putting on pants. What oh. a POS. <laughs> POS. Right, uh, man. Yeah, go on, man. I see you were you were you were being a little <laughs> sassy to this guy. I a freaking hate this dude. Look at him. Look at him. Look at his I know. face, bro. I know, man. Look he has him. a very punchable face, bro. Oh, this he dude does talk have a, a punchable lot. face. He talking a lot for somebody with a wife that look like that. But anyway, hey, bro. Anyway, he like he he reads books on his stomach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So when I seen this tweet, right, I didn't see all the backlash before I responded. I just seen it and somebody had just retweeted it. So I seen the tweet on its own. And I thought to myself, I was like, wait, did I read that right? Mm -hmm. This is, this is incredibly insensitive, right? Mm -hmm. And I went to go reading his tweets, like reading his whole profile, bro. And like Mm -hmm. he was doubling, tripling, quadrupling down Mm -hmm. on a tweet that initially was just so incredibly arrogant, ignorant, and just wrong. Mm-hmm. First of all, like what you said, for him to say, uh, we're too quick to 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 adopt unimportant aspects of their culture. 
Like the, that's the thing with some of these, some of these people, some of these, these uncultured swine. Yeah, just like it, it's just the passive aggressiveness, right? To to just openly state what's what's unimportant in our culture, right? Like it just it just speaks volumes to the kind of culture that he comes from. To me, which is none whatsoever. Hey. You know, like 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 to us, right? When we we have our cultures and, and, and traditions, cultures, customs, and traditions, like we could look at Asian culture or Black culture or uh, Mexican culture or Hispanic culture, and we could be like, okay, so they're, you know, uh, what they're wearing, their their cultural uh, attire, what they're wearing is similar to what we wear for funerals, weddings, whatever. So then even though at first it just looks weird or looks un unfamiliar, like you can draw those similarities, mm -hmm. but like when your culture is khakis and button ups, and then you just look down on everybody. Mm -hmm. It just, it's a, it's it, you speaking from a place of ignorance and arrogance. And like, he did not waver in it. He didn't learn a thing. Like there were people that were talking mess, but there was also people that were trying to teach him like this is there's errors in your ways. And the whole way he's just, he's focused on his version of modesty. He's focused on his determination of the Bible. He's focused on his norms. Like what, you know, like just what he deems. Okay. Right. The whole time. And I'm just like, and, and there was a lot more. I don't, I didn't, uh, copy and paste a lot more but i i i was i was just saying like this is crazy that because on his on his profile he had retweeted this dude that was talking about like racism is not a thing and <clears throat> i missed the days where people were judged by 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 the 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 uh by their character not the color of their skin like you know we need to get back to that and then to tweet this type of stuff <laughs> where you're basically deeming you know like uh all oceanic people's cultures and, and traditions, you're deeming them less than you're deeming them like, well, they're not, they're not us. You right. you guys, you guys still have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. You guys have to change and to conform. Like, so for somebody to say that, you know, they don't believe in racism, racism is alive and people that talk about racism are just, they're making up stuff. And then to also hold these views, like you don't even understand how oppressive this mind state could be to right. where, you look at someone in the EFI Congo and say, mm, yeah, not good Person enough. Pants. Yeah. <laughs> not good enough. You know what I'm saying? You're not yeah. modest enough. You know, if you if you dress like this, then you'll feel the gospel more. You'll 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 relate to God more. Like, who are you to talk about modesty? Like who your version of modesty and my version of modesty are totally different things. So you yeah, how, when was the last time you talked to your God? <laughs> about what the fuck modesty is, Eric <laughs> McIntyre, and who are you to tell us what the fuck we can wear? And who are you to deem what is unnecessary in whatever lack of culture that you have? <laughs> Brett has no... I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Fuck this guy. No, nah, for real. Go in, bro. Yeah. Like so. <laughs> yeah. See, what I was confused by is that uh, the island culture is too exalted in the church. I was like, when? Since when? So I'm pretty sure because he's from Utah, I'm pretty sure things are a lot different out there. Right. You gotta remember, we have like, a bigger presence out there. Super big. You a know? bigger presence. So maybe. And, and honestly, it might not even be a lot. But when you come in from where everything is exactly how Eric McIntyre has grown up for it to be. And then all of a sudden there's a thing called a, I don't know, poly night or something. Just one day out the month or the year. Right. They're going to look at that and be like, oh, that's whoa, that's way too, you know, whoa, it's, whoa, you guys are too exalted in the <laughs> church, man. It's crazy. You have this yeah. one fucking night where you all come out. That's weird, man. And the thing and the thing that was killing me was he was saying like, oh, no, that that's fine for you guys to do wherever you're from. You know, the culture of norms over there. But you're in Utah. Wear pants. We wear pants in Utah. It's like. Oh my god! It just it Man, just fuck you and your pants. <laughs> I hope your pants have shit stains in them, bro. If you from Utah, y'all ain't packed this dude out yet, man. I don't know what to say, bro. I don't know what to say, man. Yeah, Eric McIntyre, man. Hey, y'all see him? Look at his face. He's like, For real, bro. Look at his wife. That's crazy. She Whoa. need to tell him to stop because <laughs> she automatically getting targeted. 
and that looked like his cousin. Mm. Like, <laughs> mm. he might be her cousin. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't like it, bro. I don't like it at all, man. I, yeah, yeah, he sucks, man. He it was sucks. a, and it was a lot of people going in too. It was mm-hmm. a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it, there was there was people that were from Utah that were that were like there was this one girl she used to be Mormon and she was just like the fact that this came from a white man a white Mormon from Utah does not shock me at all this is how a lot of them think mm-hmm. and it was just I'm not too familiar with Utah white people Mormons because I don't really well I've heard that growing up too like a lot of like just just Mormon like a lot of uh, white Mormons in general have always looked down on people who aren't white mormons you know what i'm saying and so it's not a surprise that they feel like that within their own religion so uh eric mcintyre fuck you man (laughs) you suck dude you're a fucking nerd loser it's easy to talk shit about other cultures when you have none it is you know what i'm saying it is i wonder what he thinks is culture i guess wearing pants during sacrament (laughs) is that it that's all he has and I bet their potato salad is bland. I bet you can't whistle. Uh yeah, I bet he can't whistle. Or he whistles when he no, he whistles when he talks. <laughs> Bro, whistles when he talks. So, so, so you have snows, culture, and um, my name's Eric McIntyre, and I'm a fucking nerd. What an idiot, bro. Bet you his girl slide off the chair when she sit too fast. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> you, ever, you, ever, you ever met the people with no chins and you just like damn how you fold a comforter yeah <laughs> hey, hey hold it down yeah like, what you do you just put it on the ground and you just run over and hold it and fold it over and yeah run over. <laughs> <laughs> eric mcintyre yeah weak chin bro the crimson that's, chin that's how you know you weak because you white like your family been rich your whole life and nobody knows that version of Mac. Like we got McDonald's, we got Macintosh. I ain't never heard no McIntyre, bro. <laughs> like your family was slouching, dog. Uh, y'all, y'all ain't get to no kind of money. Y'all just went to church and wore pants. <laughs> real losers, bro. Freaking losers. Their whole culture is the church, which <clears throat> that sucks. Uh, that sucks for you, man. You got I'm nothing not- else beyond that. <laughs> Damn. So can you wear shorts to church? Is that not modest? Like showing your ankles is not modest? I guess not. No? I feel, I mean, I feel, I kind of feel underdressed when I wear shorts to church. Like, I feel like, oh, why are you, you know? Did you always? Not always, no. Like, I think once or twice. Like back in, back in the jorts era? <laughs> <laughs> I never wore jorts to church. I, Never? I, I, nah, I, I think I, I know for sure I would get yelled at. If the the shorts or the shorts that I would wear would be like Dickies. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Nice cause, little because Dickie shorts is for show. They more heavenly than George. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they more heavenly than George. Uh <clears throat> I brought I brought that up to say, uh wait, you never wore you of course wore, I wore George. No, 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 I, but like for church, you was always dressed up for church. Well, I mean, I wore pants. Pants are EFI Kanga. Really? Yeah. Oh, your dad was a pastor, though, right? Uh, yeah. But this was this was that was years after. I mean, like growing up, I would wear like pants and EFI Kongas. Damn. Yeah. You was like, <laughs> you was like, because <laughs> <laughs> obviously our verses in church is different. Because we used to, I used to just pull up and just whatever I was wearing. <laughs> Yeah, and that's that's not that's not fucking bad either. We gotta stop acting like that's a bad thing. It's like no, nah, like, I just I'm just I didn't know I was you know I didn't know I was talking to the president of the church going <laughs> <laughs> I was worried if I go when I was three years old. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't out of choice, bro. It was <laughs> uh, that, the nah. president of the church going club. <laughs> hey, fuck this guy. Hey, fuck you and Eric McIntyre. <laughs> You're both uncultured swines so wearing shorts to church. Well, I mean, you know, the, the Eric McIntyre's tweets don't hit the same to you because you he obviously was not talking about you, but he was talking about me. Like you were he took it so personally. <laughs> okay, wait, well, so what's up with the George man? What happened? Uh nah, I just was I just was thinking about it. It is <laughs> 
And I just wanted to know, like, when did you find out that jean shorts weren't cool? Do you, <laughs> bro, do you remember? Yeah, I remember, bro. Is when people started talking shit about John Cena and his jean oh. shorts, bro. <laughs> bro, and that was it. That was pretty late as far as like George and shit. <laughs> Yeah. Like once I seen people memeing the shit out of John Cena talking about he wears jean shorts to go wrestle and shit, like it just deflated the whole thing for me. I was like, damn, bro, they roasted the shit out of fucking John Cena about that shit, dog. And now every time I see him go and wrestle, I'm like, yeah, that doesn't look comfortable enough to wrestle he, in. It does just he still wear it? Good. I think so. Yeah, that's his whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't look down on John Cena. <laughs> John Cena, go to church, bro. Yeah. <laughs> For real, you'll fit in over there with the jorts. Uh, nah, bro. Right. I, so, like we was talking about earlier, uh, off off the pod, but like in Samoa, that's all I had, bro. Yeah. And in high school, that's all I had, and I'm pretty sure in junior high, that's all I had. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> George in my life. Yeah. <laughs> he painted a vivid picture. Uh, <laughs> in Samoa, that's all I had. In high school, that's all I had. In middle school, that's all I. Had. <laughs> Okay, what? <laughs> like, I like I think it's because uh, they was long, you know, because back then shorts was super long and it was cool. Yeah. So like it fit because I, I was always fat, so I always had a wide waist, but I was always short. Like I was, I'm not tall. Okay. So then it would go to like my ankles, but it was, it looked in style back then. Well, yeah, this is the early 2000s we're talking about, yeah. man. So it wasn't a problem. Right. And then, like, so I took that style with me to some more, you know what I'm saying? And out there, styles just non existent. Like, you can wear whatever you want to wear, style more, and nothing looks out of place mm-hmm. at all. Like, I remember there was a couple at ASCC that used to always wear the same color uh, pro club t shirt with black dickies every day. I think I know exactly who you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, I used yeah. to wear it every day. They would match each other and it was hey, fine. They had, they had people in, you know, so any kind of style in Samoa was acceptable. Mm-hmm. Nobody cared. It was too hot to care. Yeah. But I, but I had my jean shorts out there. And then when I moved back to SAC, I remember I was watching. Remember uh, MTV? Remember, remember ne- uh, next? Mm-hmm. And it would be like a girl was on a date and she had seven dudes in a bus. And one by one, the dudes come up, they're on a date. And any time during the date, if she don't like what he says, what he does, or whatever, she'll be like, next. And yep. then he and has he to go. And then the another guy comes. Then, yep, that was a weird show. <laughs> but anyway, so MTV had hella weird shows like that. <laughs> All right, go on. What? Okay. <laughs> Bro, she said next to one guy. He leaves. The other guy walks up. She said, George, next. I was like, <laughs> bro, I swear to you, I like my whole face just flushed red, bro. Because I was like, wait, what? And then she, you know how like they do like the little talking shit. She's like, I can't believe he's wearing George. It's like, are you serious? And I was just like, wait, is George not a thing? Then I started noticing, bro, like nobody else around me was wearing jean shorts no more. Yeah. Like it was cargo shorts or basketball shorts. That was it. Like there mm-hmm. was no jorts anymore. And I was like, oh, this is <laughs> kind of- like I said for a relic. <laughs> it's like it's like you it's a you relic know, of a bygone era. <laughs> you just start looking around and you're just like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Why nobody told me? Well, oh, what? <laughs> Started what? phasing out. I had to start phasing out my jean shorts. Okay, so what are you wearing now? I, cargo I, shorts. I literally either no. Nah, I just I either wear basketball shorts or if it's cold, then it then it sweats. Yeah, <laughs> that's the ultimate fat person outfit. Right hey, there. hey, that's what I'm saying. I thrive in the winter because I look yeah. really good. We look really good in winter clothes. Okay, the it's summer easy. is not it. Yeah, the summer. Oh my goodness. Bro, the summer is ridiculous. Come on, guy. I'm like... still trying to figure out what size shirts to get because I'm I'm too fat for two X shirts, <laughs> but I'm too small for three X shirts. Yeah. So there's nothing in between. I can't get a tall shirt. I'm not tall. You know what I'm let saying? Me, let me let me let me just put you. Uh, I don't do this, but I've heard about this. Okay. Get the two. You X. know when someone prefaces <laughs> that, <laughs> he definitely <laughs> does it. <laughs> I know you can tell I know, but okay. get the get the two X right because it's a little tighter on you. Okay, and then get you them little uh, Under Armour, you know them little body, them body suit like Under Armour type things. You know what I'm saying, and it kind of 
slims you up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be okay. a little comfortable. <laughs> it's gonna be a little comfortable, but it kind of it gives you some shape. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. This you know is just a, a full body uh push up bra. <laughs> Or you can, like, push your fat down. Yeah, for real. <laughs> this shit's just going to be hanging out under the thing. Like, it's just going to be layers of fat just hanging out under the fucking, the Under Armour material. Push that mug up into your arm like Spongebob when he had the pink <laughs> muscles. <laughs> yeah, that's all you got to do, bro. That's all you got to do. <clears throat> Such a classic episode too, man! Holy shit! Did did oh. Patrick have him too, or was it? No, else? I think it was. Just, I think it was just SpongeBob. It was just oh, SpongeBob. Was it just, that was an idiot, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> and then you start, dude. Uh, there was an episode of Botched. You seen Botched with the the doctor? Oh, I, I I've heard of it yet, but I never watched it. Wow, what happened? Bro, there was a dude who got muscles put into his body, like he wasn't buff. But he looked buff. Was it like oil injections? Because I've seen those and those are disgusting. I don't know what it and was. very dangerous. I don't know what it was, but it showed him before and he was just like a stick. And then it showed him after and he looked like, you know, kind of like Goku a little bit. But <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, it was just like weird. Like, it looked, it, it, I don't know. But I was like, yeah. hey, that's down that last like SpongeBob with the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Would you Wait, get muscle? So, would you get muscle injections? Or? No, no, no. That's dangerous. What if it's not dangerous? Still, no. Oh no, no. What if you just got the muscle implants right, and you're not really buff, but you look buff, and then somebody's like, "Hey, man, can you help me uh, carry this car over?" <laughs> There's a lady dying under carry the car. Carry this car. <laughs> There's a lady dying under the car. We need you to lift it. Help me lift it. He's just in there. Oh, sorry, citizen. I can't. I. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I have somewhere else I need to be. <laughs> Sorry, citizen. <laughs> yeah, because <for> <laughs> I walk around like this. If I get the muscle injections, you know what? If they made it in pill form, I might consider that. But the injections might be a little too much for me. But the pill. So you would take the pill to where you not buff, but you look buff. Yeah. So or if there, if there is a pill to become buff, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I would nah, the, the whole, the whole, the whole catch to this whole situation. Is that you're not really buff? Like, what if you look hella shit. buff and you're not buff, and then like a, another buff dude be like, "What you looking at?" Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at uh, nothing, sir. I'm going nice, over here. Nice arms. What do you do to get? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Lateral presses, lateral <laughs> raises. <laughs> is that a? <laughs> do you do quad fly press? Lifts. Yes, yes, man. All of the above. All of them. I do all of them. <clears throat> Holy shit, bro. Be, and I'm wearing a pink shirt for freaking SpongeBob <laughs> muscles. <laughs> bro, Sid, we need you to lift this car. Bro, this is a lady dying under the door. You <laughs> need help. Ooh. Oh. Sorry, citizen. <laughs> Sorry, is it is it uh I'm busy in my trouble is yeah <laughs> oh man so yeah jorts aren't cool <laughs> and neither are fake muscles <laughs> bro you know you know air I, I ain't gonna lie bro I'm not gonna lie I got a plastic bag in the storage in the back of my house with all of my jorts still oh shoot <laughs> You know, everything comes back around. So, yeah. you know, just I'm about to I'm about to stunt. Yeah. <laughs> so the George come back? When so, so when are the George gonna come back? I don't know. We gotta give a time I line. Bro, I don't know. It gotta be five years, it could be twenty five years. But whenever it do, oh I'm about to oh, they not even ready. What if they don't fit you anymore? They were hella big. <laughs> <laughs> If they don't oh, fit me, if they still don't fit me, it's like if they don't fit me because I'm too big, oh, bro, yeah, pack me up, dog. Go ahead. No, I'm saying like you know, if you were to lose weight or whatever, and you don't fit them, man, anyway, you got to no thing, man. You put a little shoestring, you know what I'm saying? You good? Okay, yep. That's it. It's mm -hmm. just it's gonna look a little puffy, but that's all good. You know what I'm saying for real, you can't have it all bunched up in the front. It's 
you know? That's what I used to do, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, that shit is uncomfortable, though. I do that, too. Like, when the belt, uh, what is it? Like, I, I've reached Does the last reach loop on the belt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark just got to reach around. around. Fuck you. Mark just he makes it to the front. Around. Not even. It Mark makes just it to the front, t- bro. He tried to talk around. When the belt does it all. When the belt all. That's opposite, bro. I said when the belt is in the last loop. Hey, forget you. Marcus. Marcus, I knew where you was going. I've been there, okay? I had my one time on my, my my shorts my shorts was sagging and my teacher trying to give me his belt and it didn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> no, was here. here's here's an extra belt. Let's <laughs> put that on. Is it supposed to reach the hole? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, man, I've been there, bro. I feel it. Oh, you just got to loop to the first two little notches. <laughs> you just yeah, loop it around and it just squeezed the front of your stomach. <laughs> I used to use a plastic bag. That used to be my my deal. Mm. Till my mom was like, "Where are the plastic bags at? You know they don't <laughs> give these out for free anymore." Like what? And then you get up and sh- <laughs> make some noise when you get up. <laughs> mm. Actually, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, citizen. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. Oh man, um, one of the one of the other things on the docket that I wanted to talk about was a revisit from last week's Patreon episode. So the submarine topic, right? So when we talk about it, so we record on Mondays and Tuesdays, but the Tuesday that we record, we release it on Friday. And let me tell you, bro, the information from the Tuesday morning that we recorded to the Friday morning that we released, Mm -hmm. it was a lot of information. Yeah. And I wanted to just missed out on. Yeah. And I wanted to come on here, man, backtrack what I said. You know what I'm saying? Wow, loser, loser! Hey, Why you backtracking? Hey. You know, loser. It's, you know it's funny. You know how people be like, "Man, you gonna grow out of it? You gonna learn?" Where I learned like right after we recorded. <laughs> I yeah. was like, I don't feel good about this episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, you sit in the group chat I'm like, bro. There's a lot of things I need to backtrack. Like, uh, yeah, what exactly. Did we talk about? But then well, I watched it and I was like, well, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so when we recorded it. It was just billionaires on a submarine die. And that yeah. was the talking point that we. Hey, hey you, you know, we're not fans of billionaires. Yeah. And then like all the information started coming out about who they were. You know, one of them had a kid, 19 year old. He didn't want to even go. Uh, one of them, you know, so like it was a lot more information and I felt really bad. And then on top of that, mm-hmm. like all of the jokes on Twitter was. It was a lot. Yeah. And I can't help but think like I'm looking at it and I'm just like, damn, bro, like these people are billionaires and you can you can say what you want about billionaires, especially in a capitalistic country like America. But at the okay, end of chill. the day, chill out. Chill. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Nah, you, you know, I know. you know, I know it's very true. Uh, but at the end of the day, bro, like I'm sitting here like, damn, that was somebody's parent. That yeah. was, you know, somebody's grandparent, you know, or somebody's uh wife husband i think it was only dudes on there but you know it was just it was a lot it was a lot um and so there was one tweet specifically that that so there was like a lot of jokes and then there was a lot of backlash and then there was a lot of defense about the jokes and uh one of the tweets did you want to read it fucking deal uh i don't even have that on here i don't think yeah i think it said the way bottom no no nothing okay Oh, is this the uh, felonious monk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I got you. I didn't know this pertained to that. Yeah, I thought it was its own separate thing. Okay, yeah. Oh, now it all makes sense. I was like, why? Is this? <laughs> why the hell is- did you add this to our notes? Yeah, no, but not even that. I was like, that's another good thing too. That's another good talking point to talk about too. Like when it comes yeah. to you know tragedy in your life and how you deal with it. But you know, this is that's something separate. But yeah, I'll mm-hmm. go. I'll read it. So. um from Athelonious Monk, hilarious name. For all of my black life, black people have laughed at tragedy. It's how a lot of us process trauma. It's not new and it's not limited to the internet. I've seen laughter at funerals. My dad got shot a few years ago. We roasted him in the hospital. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not saying you have to laugh, but I'm not going to judge you either way. 
We can't do that, uh, uh, quote unquote, everybody processes pain uh, differently than go, but the way all of you are doing it is wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are solid points. So Very solid points and something that I identify with myself. What? In, in, in relation to the whole submarine situation, uh, how do you feel about his stance or, or did you want me to take the wheel? Um, I, I mean, I'll touch on it. I, 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 like I said, I, I identify with, with this definitely, bro. You know, um, that's how I've dealt with my own tragedies in my life is, is, is laughing about it, making jokes about it. It helps, you know, what do they say? It's a defense mechanism. So I Mm -hmm. get what he's saying. And I feel like in that point, he's right. Right. But the, the last part of it that he says, um, is very like very on the on the nose he's right about this part he says we can't do that everybody processes pain differently than go but the way all of you are doing it is wrong yeah that's real that's real like yeah mm. I, like i i remember doing that myself in the past too where like you know that whole thing with taking pictures at funerals you know what i'm saying or taking pictures of your your sick loved ones in the hospital you know what i'm saying yeah. like things like that have always made me uncomfortable mm-hmm. but i can't i have to look beyond myself because it's like that's not how i would do it but hey i yeah. can't talk down on someone else who is doing that because hey that's how they do it you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying that's what they do unless you're over here trying to look like a damn model which i've seen a couple of times which is disgusting ew that is yeah <laughs> objectively disgusting but you know i mean beyond that yeah I, I i feel what this guy is saying um and yeah i i yeah i think it extends for me too to the whole submarine thing yeah. Hey, man, if these people can can talk. But the thing is, is that like the people who are talking shit aren't relatives of the of the deceased. That's exactly my point, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, yeah, you you, you sit there and get off all these jokes or whatever, dog. But like like we've said it many times on here, you cannot hide behind that shit. Like, who is yeah. you? Like, you know, we so, all got to be held accountable for all this bullshit that we're saying. So what's up? So so the main point of my my like counteract to this mm-hmm. is like so his tweet is not wrong mm-hmm. you know exactly how he wrote it is exactly how i feel like a lot of us grew up mm-hmm. to where we don't you know it's it's easier to to lighten the load by joking about things it, it helps bring the mood up it helps all of this this type of stuff right yeah, there's no arguing against <clears throat> that i feel like the, the, well, the, well, whatever. Sorry. I mean, you know, some people might not go that route, which is Definitely. fine. But, you know, mm-hmm. for a lot of us, that's how we get get through. Mm-hmm. That's how we deal with our trauma. We make fun of it. We make light of it. Then it just it becomes something that doesn't conquer us. We conquer it. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. Like, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. But in relation to the submarine incident, in relation to a lot of this. That's not our trauma to process. Mm-hmm. Like like these people that died on their submarine it don't affect us. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not hard. Like, you know, when people say like, we laugh at the tragedy to, to help us get through it. It's because it's on us. Yeah. It's because the weight is on us. It's because the things are happening to us. Mm-hmm. We laugh to divert that attention to dive, you know, to, 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 to get the pain off of us. Mm-hmm. In this instance, <clears throat> it's not our pain to deal with. Right. Nobody really yeah, was a, Nobody was affected by these people. Mm-hmm. Everybody had a joke to say about these people. And so in, 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 when, I, when I flip it, the whole, uh, like a, a parallel situation to this would be, a hypothetical situation would be, if he said, my dad got shot a few, a few years ago, we roasted him in the hospital. If his dad died and then I got on there, and was like, damn, your dad got caught slipping. That fool almost died. Ha ha. That fool's a loser. What a bum. Or, you know, all, all these other people saying, oh, yeah, you know, my auntie was in the hospital for cancer. We joked about her. And I'm just like, look at this bald headed chick on the hospital bed about to die. What a loser. Notice <clears throat> what you're saying. We. Yeah. We as in you and your family roasted. Yeah. That's, you and yeah. your family talked all that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying so it's OK within your circle. But exactly like you said, bro. Anybody outside of that are like, hey man, don't don't, don't you fucking say that about my dad, bro. That's you I know will beat you up. <laughs> and that's exactly that was my point. And so, like a lot of a lot of people this at the time, at this time that this was tweeted, it had 2,000, 2,600 retweets and 14,000, 15,000 likes. Mm. And it's like 
that ain't even a, a that ain't even a fair like a uh, uh, parallel situation. Yeah, it it's don't. Very shallow. Yeah, it don't. It don't make no sense to compare the two. So, so like when we did our episode, and then afterwards, when I start learning about the people, when you start learning like the lives that these people led. The the son, the nineteen year old, he didn't really want to go. Like, imagine you didn't want to go, but you just wanted to do something to please your pops. So then you go and then you die. Yeah. And then on top of that, losing your life, you got people on here talking crazy about you that 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 hide behind the whole I'm I'm trying to do this to process my trauma. Mm-hmm. That's not your trauma to process. That's not your pain to endure or to mm. to 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 lighten the load like that has nothing to do with y'all. Mm, I just think so real. I just think it's so normal <clears throat> in this internet culture. Like everything that people do is for a like or a retweet. Like oh. <laughs> I remember a few years ago, bro. Like it, I started tweeting in like 2009 mm. in, in the avid class, my junior year. Nice. Like we we heard about Twitter and like I got on Twitter, I started tweeting at uh Diddy. <laughs> that was the thing. Like I was tweeting at Diddy, hey man, what's up, man? How you doing, man? What you eating for breakfast? You know? Yeah. And like Twitter used to be just a complete just whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. Just ate some popcorn. It was too buttery. <laughs> yeah. That was what Twitter was. Mm-hmm. Uh oh man, my stomach hurts. Or just seen an airplane, wonder where it's going. <laughs> and like I now tweet like that. <laughs> shout out to the people who still tweet like that because y'all y'all are holding it down for what twitter was actually like before the whole wave like bro like now you look at twitter bro and i promise you once you scroll nine times out of ten every tweet that you see is somebody trying to go viral mm. and i remember the flip it was like 2016 maybe 17 mm-hmm. where people went from just talking about their lives and talking about their days like whatever to like trying to <laughs> trying to sound perfect trying to look perfect trying to say things that on that they know people will resonate with and then retweet and repost is there a specific example from that time that you can like remember that made you feel like oh this this shit is is now not great <laughs> I just remember, I remember at one point, everyone that I followed before the change was talking about sports, talking about movies, talking about food, talking about school, talking about TV. And then like what? And then like once a viral talking point came up, that's when everybody. No. And then everyone I overnight, bro, became a love guru. Mm. Do you remember that everyone on Twitter was talking about relationships and it just, it just went from there. Relationships, sex, like it was mainly sex that I was seeing. Like everybody was so sex positive and talking. You was one of the, (laughs) (laughs) but like, I don't know. That's all I like. My timeline was full of like people like trying to fuck and shit. It was weird. (laughs) Giving out like sex and love advice. I was like, uh, bro, exactly. It was like everyone knew exactly what to do in relationships. Right. Everyone knew the answer. Everyone was perfect. Everyone like, and I was just sitting back like, what the heck is going on? Like, this is kind of weird, but For you know, that whatever. must be fucking nice. You weren't tweeting like that last year, man. You were talking about your fucking <laughs> breakfast over here and shit. Now all of a sudden you're in, you know, you want to give me love advice and shit. Like the fucking what happened, to your, what happened to your oatmeal? Like now you just, yeah, <laughs> I want to know more about your oatmeal than who the fuck you fucking. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, so just Twitter in general, bro. Like the whole culture behind social media has has shifted. Yeah, and I say all that to say, you know, people are now defending these jokes, saying this is how we process trauma, mm-hmm. and it's it's just not the correlation is all. First version of me definitely would have agreed with that point. This is how we process trauma. This is how we do it. You know. Yeah. But we, you know. But it's 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 once you realize that it's not about you, then it's like, okay, maybe I should lay the fuck off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and it's not wrong. Like the tweet, like I said before, the tweet as the tweet is, is not wrong. But in relation to it's you know it it doesn't hold up. Like imagine if imagine if the stuff that you you can you can remind yourself, I remember when this happened, I had to make jokes to make it easier for me. 
Mm-hmm. Imagine if some random stranger on Twitter just started to throw his two cents in and make jokes about that. Oh yeah, I would not be. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> a fan of that. I would not at be all. A fan of that. Yeah. Nobody would be. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whatever. But, yeah, well, just just leave it as is, Sefa, because he's dealing with his trauma that way. I hey, I mean, I guess maybe maybe random people dying does affect you, but I never seen nobody talk about no school shooters. I never seen jokes about that. You know. So, whatever, you know. Anyways, <laughs> well, as soon as as soon as people mention billionaire, ultra yeah. rich, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, that shit matters to a lot of people. Class, I get it. You but, do, you know. I get it too. But I just wanted. I say all that to say, man. I just wanted to take back some of the stuff I was saying because I didn't feel good after we. <laughs> yeah, hey, growth, man. I didn't feel good, oh. man. You know, See? that's that's how you do it, man. You confront. Yeah. Confront, you know, you confront what the fuck you were talking about and figure out if you liked it or not, and then go from there. And um, just, I just want to throw this out there, man. Fuck you, Eric McIntyre. <laughs> say it one more time, because I can't say it. Okay, yeah, fuck you, Eric McIntyre. You suck. <laughs> Loser. Nerd. Yeah. It's me processing my trauma. Oh, no. I'm processing my trauma. The, the trauma you inflicted on me about my culture. Hold on, exactly. I can't hear you. Fucking wire. <laughs> yeah. Yo, million dollar operation. Marcus look, look weird without his headset on. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the hell up. What do you mean? Now I gotta take it off to see. Bro, are you are you man, what if what if do you be gaming with your headset on? Not this one, no. I have a separate one. <sighs> My bad. It's I'm not even billionaire. Hey, I'm I didn't a billionaire. Even buy it. Hey, I didn't even buy it. Shout out to my little Uso, bro. I'm not gonna put his name out there, but shout out to the little Uso. You, you think you're gonna get that little divot in your head? I was just thinking of that. I seen yeah. the video of that guy who shaved his head. Yeah. He shaved his head and there was the den in there. I was like, Oh, I hope not, bro. I, I mean I leave it at the highest thing, so it's not just it's sitting right on top of my head. I'm not gonna lie, I gotta yeah, I gotta do that because yeah. When I, I got a big head. I start going bald, and if I got a divot in there, bro, I'm gonna just hold my Come arm on. like this the whole time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you start rocking hats. Uh, yeah, I guess. But I if I it. got a divot in my head, I probably could wear two hats. You know what I'm saying? Damn it. T.I., you have 24 hours to respond. <laughs> Holy shit. <clears throat> Did, do we that? have anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh,. I don't know, man. I I, I kind of do, but then I I don't know. I don't have a maybe I don't have a strong enough point to really talk about it because um, I don't know. I think maybe save it for the Patreon. But no, this is no. This is important, yeah. bro. This is <laughs> this is important because did we talk about that the uh, no we talked about that music stuff last week, right? Literally, mm-hmm. don't undermine yeah. your reach, right? Mm-hmm. And I was talking to my brother about it. And he felt a certain way about some of the things that we talked about in that uh, uh, in that episode. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of wanted to touch on it just a little bit. Um, uh, he he was talking about he was talking about the glorification of the street stuff in the music, right? Mm-hmm. And he he felt he felt that he felt that what we were talking about that as soon as we as soon as a rapper. Even if they are of that life, as soon as rappers talk about street shit in the music, he thought that we meant that they were all like automatically glorifying all that all that stuff. But then I I, I tell the us, you know, you can talk about street shit without glorifying it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that was that was one of the biggest point I wanted to make with him because and he had a really good point. Like he's not wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like what he was talking about, it wasn't wrong in that um in that like when you are of that life and you talk about that in your music like it it you know it it, it doesn't make you automatically glorifying it but it, it he felt like there were some hypocritical statements that we were saying mm-hmm. um about the whole thing you know and i i feel like and you said it we were talking about it before the show like maybe it was a little bit uh, maybe defensive you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the Uso is of that ilk. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it, it, it might have maybe felt like or looked like a personal attack, but that I, I tried to explain that that wasn't it at all. You know what I'm saying? So 
I kind of wanted to bring that up with you because it, it was your point that you made and to yeah. see if you can, you know, and I sent you, you know, what we was talking about. So, you know, you had time to think about it. And I, I wanted to hear what you had to say about that and talk about it. Because, man, I as much as I want to contribute, all I'm really good at is telling uh, uh, Eric McIntyre to go fuck himself. <laughs> you know what I'm well, saying? Yeah. So you did send me the messages. And like I said, like, he's not wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think with this uh, specific uh, response, we just got to clarify. Yeah. Like when it comes to glorifying, uh, it's a lot of music now that's being pushed, especially commercially. That's not conducive to any to any part of, of, of pot, like moving forward. Mm -hmm. All right. So so we got music like Nas, and Jay-Z and like. You know, even like <clears throat> you could even go with Jeezy and all that mm -hmm. to where they glow, they talk about that street stuff. They've, they've talked about the streets. They talked about that life. You know, it's well documented where Jay-Z comes from. It's well documented where Nas comes from. Jay, the kid, like all of these rappers who have done this for years mm -hmm. and like it, it, it talks about it, but they don't glorify. It. Right. And when I say glorify, <clears throat> um, I see kids that's uh, in football camps or football teams, right? 14, 15 year old kids, even younger. They got like under 10 uh, football teams. Right. Uh, I think it was, it was last year's season. I had watched uh, like a little um, highlight tape, highlight reel, whatever of these, uh, these kids that was not even 10 years old playing football. Right. And they was, lining up they was running out on the field they had the flag or whatever right and the other team that they was on let's just call them the bears i don't know i don't remember what team they was on but it was the bears. bad news bears yeah let's call them the bears well the team that i was watching the highlight tape it was nine and under basically 10 and under kids talking about smoking on that bear pack mm. smoking on that bear pack mm -hmm. and like if you don't know like that whole situation of smoking on whatever that comes from drill music where it's like, Oh yeah, I killed your homie. They basically got him cremated. And now he and my blunt smoking on that, whoever pack yeah, and that's Chicago slang stuff, man. <clears throat> yeah. That's Chicago. And that's slang. Mm -hmm. And so like music like that, or you got music where they like, uh, I shot your homie in the face. I shot your, you know, like a lot of this music that's coming out nowadays to where it's just, basically glorifying everything that's going on in the streets and making it seem cool mm -hmm. and making it seem attractive or making it seem like, you know, like other artists, like, like Jay, like I said, Jay-Z has a song called just a week ago where, where he's like the Rico repo your vehicle. Damn. Everything was all good just a week ago. Mm -hmm. So he giving you the streets, right? He, he, mm -hmm. he giving you, he talking about the streets. He talking about where he's coming from, mm -hmm. but he also giving you a slice of reality with it. Mm -hmm. And so like the music that I've always gravitated towards and the music that I feel is positive for our communities, it don't shy away from the street stuff. Mm -hmm. It has never shied away from the street stuff. Like you can't really shy away from it if you from it. And, and, and I know he said in the message, like, you know, isn't that hypocritical to uh, expect someone from the streets to not talk about it? That's mm -hmm. not, I'm not, I'm, I would never tell you like what, first of all, I wouldn't tell nobody what they should or shouldn't talk about, but in the same sense, it's like, there's, there's a tactful way to do things. <laughs> yeah. We've talked about this. There's a tactful way to do things. And to me, just under, just under like my umbrella of what I feel is, is a, like what I would promote mm -hmm. is music that touches on that that can touch on it in a way where kids that come from the hood, maybe they're not in the streets, but they from the hood. They can, they can listen to it. They can relate to it, but they could also see like, there's no, <laughs> there's not much to that life. Right. So that's, that's what I, I deem. And that's what I, I, I deem is like hood music. That's not glorifying the hood. That's not yeah. glorifying the streets. Yeah, there's um, a major <clears throat> difference between music that glorifies the street shit and one that talks about it without having to resort to talking about, you know, smoking on the whatever pack. Yeah, mm -hmm. huge difference, bro. Yeah, and, and, I, and you know, and I, I, I explained it to those, you know, mm -hmm. so. Hey, but I do appreciate him reaching out. 
you know, yeah. like oh, the yeah. fact that the fact that we have people listening, the fact that they they care this much to actually give us some insight on that. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's dope. Um, mm-hmm. And also, like, we might say some things that <laughs> just don't get explained too much because me and you are just riffing off each other. And maybe you don't feel that way. You might just you might understand where I'm coming from without without it being said, because we know each other so well. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, uh, shout out to him. Shout out to everybody that listens to the pod like that intently. And we definitely want to keep hearing about it. And if he has anything you know, else to add on from, from this excerpt, definitely we could talk about it. But yeah, man, hopefully people could come out and make music that that is definitely true to themselves, true to where they come from. But also like with with kids in mind yeah like because i feel like when you have a platform it's just a whole different sense of responsibility Mm -hmm. like you have to kind of go out of your way to you have to go out of your way when you have when you when you had a responsibility of a platform you have to go out of your way to be like okay i might not believe in this but there's people out there who do so i'm gonna have to see it from their point of view Mm. you know it's just it's a whole it's it's a whole different line to toe once you once you get in that position. But you know, we still learning, we're still early on in this. Mm-hmm. Um also damn you it know, feels like forever. What? The the show. But we're still very early in this. Yeah, bro. Like you I said, saying? like I told you the other time, uh, I was like, dang, so how do we go about you know selling ad space? <laughs> It's like, well, first of all, you have to have an audience of 10,000. I'm like, uh, <laughs> okay, so we have no, we're nowhere near where we need to get. But, you know, with that being said, we got a lot, we got a lot of ground to cover, but, you know, this ain't stopping anytime soon. You know what I'm saying? No, goddamn <laughs> right. It's not. Fuck you again, Eric McIntyre. You suck. <laughs> I said all throughout this episode, fuck him. Yeah, for real. Yeah, bum. Yeah. Shout out to my Uso, bro. See, what's up? Anything else is bliss. Oh, Tell me. I don't, I don't think so, man. No, no, no. I was talking to the Uso who, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> <the call. laughs> yeah, let us know, man. I, I really do appreciate it, though. Anybody that listens to us and cares enough to write an extensive message like that, I give it up to them because that's dope. Hell yeah, man. Um, I got really nothing else besides, you know, the good old promotion, man. Follow us everywhere, dude. Oh, yeah. hello, Marcus, Sefa M, the Polytechnic Podcast, all on Instagram, Twitter, wherever you're at. Even TikTok, dude. I'm 32 years old. Getting on TikTok is weird. <laughs> hey, I just hit 10,000 followers, bro. Ugh, quit bragging, I'm, guy. I'm fancy, bro. Ugh, he's going Man, Hollywood. I'm going Hollywood. I ain't tripping. Hell bro. yeah. That mug is crazy, though. Know? Like, I went through all my all my little posts and stuff a couple months ago and deleted like a bunch of old posts, but like I was looking at them and I had these songs where I was like pouring my heart out at like seven likes. Yeah. No comments. Yeah. They don't want to hear about that. They don't want to hear about uh, what's going on in your soul, bro. Oh, they just want to drink and turn up. It's crazy, man. And smoke that pack. It's, <laughs> it's been a, it's been a long time coming, man. This is uh, great, man. This is great news to hear, man. Um, yeah, I got nothing else, bro. Patreon.com slash the politic and podcast. We fixed the it, link. It works now. It works now. We've been promoting this for months and the link was broken the entire time. So uh Ooh. shout out to the so Lance for pointing yeah. that out. We got that up and running now. Patreon.com slash the politic and podcast. Um, thank you guys again for still being here with us on this journey, man. Um, good lord. What what you laughing at? What happened? That we had the wrong link every episode for 38 <laughs> I, episodes. I feel bad, bro. <laughs> Fuck. Um, good. We didn't know. We're just learning. We're new. Yeah. Yeah. We We're just new. started. Um, other than that, I got nothing else, bro. What's up? Fool, what you trying to do? I'm trying to go eat, man. I'm going to say, take us out, bro. I'm fucking starving too, bro. Um, this has been another <laughs> what? I was just saying, my intermittent fasting ended 17 minutes oh, ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> bro, I got eight hours in the window. Okay. <laughs> Um, this has been another episode of the Polytechnic Podcast. You nerds, I'm Marcus DeCefa. We're out. Eric McIntyre, you suck. Shut yeah, up. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye.